Hello, my name is Lola, and I'm reacting to Screen Rants The Boys Season 3, 15 Things You Missed in Episode 8. If you want to see my full reaction to Episode 8 of The Boys Season 3, there'll be a link in the description down below. And, yeah, that, it, like, man, I hate that they killed off Black Noir, man. But, I mean, it's like, who knows, he might come back? Because, I mean, the dude's been through a lot. He's been burnt, took in, I think, some explosions. Of, he's been freaking shot, stabbed, like. Bert, it's like, and he, that's how he's gonna die. That's how they're gonna end him. Just have his intestines ripped out by Homelander. Like, come on, man. And I really, I, I'm, I was like expecting, like, after that explosion, like, oh my god, did they just kill off Maeve and Soldier Boy? Like, what? And then turns out they're both alive and they're putting Soldier Boy back into the, back to sleep. Like, what? <sighs> anyway. I'm glad they're alive, you know. That means that we might see them again, maybe sometime in season four, maybe not, maybe season five, if there even is going to be season five, which I hope there is. Anyway, and if uh, you want to like, comment, subscribe, my channel, you can, or if you don't want to, that's fine too. Here we go. So the boys season three ended with quite a literal bang and with an eye-popping spectacle. But as this is a Things You Missed video and not a recap video, we're gonna ignore all that and get down to the good stuff. And yes, there will be spoilers in this video. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and dive right into it. So first off the bat is a callback to season one that takes place as Huey and Annie hash it out in the car as they head on their way to confront Soldier Boy. As they talk, Huey recounts how his father tried to cope without Huey's mother around and how they would eat pizza rolls together. And Huey said that his father, who he thought was weak because of it, was actually really strong. The pizza roll reference is a callback to season one, when the two discuss their love of pizza rolls in an argument, and Simon Pegg delivers arguably the best line of the series with, you love pizza rolls, before Huey says, yeah, when I was seven. What a liar. You never stop loving those small pockets of molten lava. I am not seven. As the episode comes to a close, we see a montage of all the different characters, such as and I love that song, Goodbye Elbrick Road by Ellen John. My most favorite Ellen John song. Is the deep eating away his troubles to the song Goodbye Yellow Brick Road by Elton John. But why that song exactly? Well, in that song, the narrator is saying goodbye to the Yellow Brick Road, which is a symbol for wealth and fame because he wants to take back control of his life and return to his more humble farm roots. This is all pretty fitting as it comes as Maeve decides to leave the Seven for good after mm -hmm. losing her powers and faking her death, and instead go into hiding on a farm where she can live in peace, leaving the spotlight forever, or at least for now. I mean, she was kind of a bit more forced into doing it as Homelander yeah. would have probably tracked her down and killed her otherwise, but the farm choice is certainly a nice touch. Speaking of May's fate though, her leaving the show, well, presumably leaving, she can still come back. Yeah, um, if you don't know in the comics, um, when Starlight tries to leave Bot in the Seven, Queen Maeve is like protecting her while Homelander is like gunning after them, trying to stop them. And then, uh, and then Queen Maeve tries to fight Homelander, but Homelander ends up killing her. Like, so yeah, in this, she got a better leave than she did in the comics. It's better than them just killing her off. Like, man. Back later on, I guess, is different from what happens in the comics. Mm -hmm. Although the final showdown with Homelander and Soldier Boy does have some similarities to her comic book fate. That's because in the comics, Maeve was also in a relationship with Homelander but left him and ended up joining the boys after Homelander tricked her into sleeping with Black Noir. While working with the boys, Maeve ends up sacrificing mm -hmm. herself to save Starlight from Homelander and Black Noir. And although mm -hmm. she's pretty easily defeated in that fight, unlike on the show where she manages to wound Homelander pretty badly, by taking on Homelander, she managed to give Starlight enough time to actually escape. Either way, Maeve's sacrifice in both the show and the comics wound up saving Starlight both times. Mm -hmm. This isn't specifically a reference, but honestly, there's nowhere else for me to talk about it, so I'm just gonna bring it up here. Continuing on with Maeve, one of the most gruesome moments in the episode comes when Homelander pulls a mountain from Game of Thrones and pops her eye with his thumb. Something pretty similar did happen in the comics, although it wasn't Maeve that lost her eye in a fight, for but sure. instead Stormfront. Stormfront, oh, Stormfront. had a phobia oh, yeah. of going blind and having his eye damaged in a fight, and he ended up having his eye ripped out by Kimiko during their scrap, understandably leaving him in a whole world of pain. The Stormfront of the show, though, of course, lost a lot more than just an eye. Mm -hmm. Mm, suffers like you suffer. Mm -hmm. Let me help. 
Seeing as how he is just a straight up parody of Captain America, there are a number of parallels that can be drawn between Soldier Boy and Cap. Except for the fact that Soldier Boy probably wouldn't go back in time to date Peggy, if you know what I mean. Huey, listen, these women, they're like fine wine, okay? The older they get, the more delicious, but the drier. Anyways, back to the topic at hand. During the final fight, Butcher and MM attack Soldier Boy, and Butcher ends up punching through his shield and breaking it, much to Soldier Boy's shock and sadness. Yeah. 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 Take that. Fuck yeah. This Fuck immediately yeah. made me think of the moment in Endgame where Thanos breaks Captain Shield, again, very much to cap shock and sadness. Another parallel between the two is obviously the fact that they served in World War II, although it is revealed that neither had quite the glamorous experiences it was made out to be. Also, though there are some similarities between Soldier Boy and Cap's reasoning for trying to become a super soldier, Cap, of course, was small and frail and wasn't strong enough to serve in the army, so he decided to take the super soldier serum in order to serve his country. Soldier Boy, meanwhile, revealed to Butcher that he signed up for Vought testing because he was belittled by his father for not being enough of a man, something that he basically received to Homelander and Ryan later on, and Huey pretty much all the rest of the season. And he just really wanted to make himself stronger, although his father ended up resenting him even more as he saw it as taking a shortcut. Speaking of parallels though, basically all of the male characters on the show, other than Huey, have a bad relationship with their fathers, with Butcher's old man being an abusive alcoholic, Soldier Boy's yeah, dad also Soldier being an Boy. abusive alcoholic, Frenchie's dad being an uh -huh. abusive drug addict, and Homelander's dad being Soldier Boy, aka mm -hmm. an abusive alcoholic. It's mm -hmm. probably for the best that Arnie doesn't show up and try to play a game of who's your daddy and what does he do. <laughs> MM's storyline is also <laughs> defined by his relationship with his father, cop. as nice. his father's hatred of Soldier Boy and obsession with getting revenge mark their relationship, and mm -hmm. MM worries that his own hatred for Soldier Boy will strain his relationship with his daughter. A surprisingly sad moment in the show comes in the scene where oh, Homelander I hated this. Noir and leaves oh. him to die with his animated friends. This is actually a complete reversal from the comic books where Noir was actually the one who killed Homelander. That's because in the oh, comics yeah. it was revealed that Noir is actually a clone of Homelander, mm -hmm. who Vought created to keep Homelander in line and were using as a puppet to frame Homelander for a number of nefarious deeds, including eating a baby. It was kind of gross. Once this twist was revealed on the page, Homelander went berserk and tried to kill Noir. Noir, but he ended up failing as Noir killed him instead by breaking his jaw and opening his face. Yeah, that'll do it. Now the Noir yeah. clone twist was done away with a long time ago on the show, mm -hmm. but it's interesting to see a complete role reversal with it being Homelander that ended up killing Noir, and then going on a hypocritical rant at A-Train for quote unquote, killing his own kind. So obviously one of the biggest twists in the penultimate episode was the reveal that Soldier Boy was Homelander's biological father, and they end up having some quality father-son time in the finale. However, fun little fact, Anthony Starr is actually two years older at 46 than his on-screen dad, who is only 44. Now I know that it doesn't matter much in terms of context of the show as Soldier Boy hasn't aged, but I thought it was worth a mention. Either way, if I can look half as good at them at that age, I'd be lucky. Heck, if oh. I can look half as good at them at 33, I would be lucky. One thing I did wonder during the fight with Maeve, did Homelander initially pull his punches? At the beginning of the fight, after he says, not now, Maeve, it seems like Homelander is actually holding back just a little bit in the fight. Could it be because he's still in love with her? Or did he just want to keep her alive to harvest her eggs? Or maybe he just didn't want to kill two soups in one day. Although I guess he planned on killing Soldier Boy, so I guess it would have been three soups in one day. Either way, you decide. <laughs> You remember earlier on in the season when we saw Homelander Breaking watching back. John of the mm -hmm. Seven and the sound was obscured as he was deep in thought thinking about Stormfront? This is extremely similar to a moment in this episode. As Butcher learns of his fate, the sound is obscured and oh, he focuses yeah. on something else so we can't hear exactly what the doctor is saying. And it is only later that he verifies he's aware of his terminal diagnosis. Also, unfortunately, unlike Arnie, it is a tumor. This is also similar to the Breaking Bad pilot where Walt learns that he has lung cancer and looks oh, down yeah. at the mustard stain on the doctor's coat while the sound is obscured. The writer actually made me include that last little bit, so there you go, I guess. Another maybe reference comes at the end of the episode where Ryan looks at the camera and his expression changes from shock to a small creepy smile. This feels very similar to the fourth wall oh, breaking stare yeah. that Norman Bates does at the end of Psycho as his internal monologue reveals he wouldn't hurt a fly. Now this reference is even more tenuous, but the writer put it in here, so here we go. The evacuation of Vought Tower felt a lot like the terror threat sequence in another great show, 
Secession. Both focus on the media centers of the buildings they work in, and both involve a character being demoted from the VIP escape to having to slum it with the normies. The only thing the boys was missing was a water bottle fight or a small attack child. <laughs> One of the best sequences in the finale comes as Kimiko She's takes amazing. on the armed guards who try to stop Frenchie from brewing up a fresh back of Novichok, with Kimiko awesome. taking them out in a classically gory style to a fun soundtrack. Mm -hmm. The song in question here is, of course, Maniac from Flashdance, and its use was teased in the penultimate episode. And on our very last episode of What Is MM Wearing? For this season, at least, the man did not disappoint. As we've mentioned in a lot of our other videos, MM tends to wear a number of different hip hop inspired t shirts. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is how he ended the season. In this episode, we see him wearing both Snoop a Snoop Dogg shirt and a and Tupac shirt. Tupac. Again, reinforcing the fact that this man mm -hmm. has taste. Now, it's hard to ignore that the Homelander rallies are a parody of oh, real life yeah. MAGA rallies in the US yeah, with Trump. red hats and everything. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> and they seemingly included one of the most famous faces from the events of January mm -hmm. 6th in the finale, the QAnon Shaman. If mm -hmm. you look closely at the background during the final scene, you can make out someone who looks exactly mm -hmm. like the QAnon Shaman standing amongst the other Homelander fans. And finally, this isn't an entry that pertains to the final episode exclusively, but the final scene where Homelander shows off Ryan to his fans was not shot in New York, but shot at David P. Cut Square in Toronto, which, side tangent, Canada. is where the writer got starstruck by Javier Bardem during TIFF and made an ass out of himself. But that's a completely irrelevant piece of information to end the video with. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, that's it? Oh. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah, I did not know about the uh, the eye thing. Like, what? It's actually Stormfront. What? And I totally like missed that whole Captain America and Thanos reference there. The freaking shield breaking. Like, how could I have done that? But yeah, like, man, I'm still pissed off that, man, they killed off Black Noir, man. Like, I was expecting, like, oh, like, we were going to see, like, a rematch of Black Noir and Soldier Boy, but nope. <laughs> Guess we're not getting that unless he some way, somehow survives and, uh, you know, and comes back for season four. I don't know. Probably. Anyway, that's my reaction to Screen Rants the Boys, season three, 15 Things You Missed in episode eight. Like I said, there'll be a link in description of the original video and my full reaction to episode eight in the description down below. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.